The ABB FIA Formula E Championship kicks up another gear. We head to Mazzano in Italy. The World Circuit Marco Simoncelli. Yesterday's round six provided us with an absolute confusing race. The winner wasn't the winner. Today, however, delivered one of the best qualifying of the season. And with two laps less, we should have one of the best races of the season. Fingers crossed, though. Everybody plays ball. Let's head down to the grid then with the world feed for pre race ceremonies. Keep the car in one piece and then the race will unfold. Uh, well, yesterday we were on the grid and you lot were flying around trying to find some stories. One of my favourite parts of the show. So off you go again. Go and get us some right. stuff. Uh, where <laughs> should we start? Um, McLaren, should we see if Sam Bird he is was. around? He was around. Yeah. He's not. Uh, Stoffel's up here. Should we get Stoffel? Yeah. Uh, um, I actually just spoke to him briefly before we went on air, but let's jump in there. Yes. Sofo, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we're going to speak to your driver. Well, the big, big boss. Yeah, of, uh, absolutely. The Stellantis Group is here. Yeah, well. And, well, very happy to meet him, but I want to speak to a race driver. Um, I spoke to you just before we went on, on air, and you have to work quite hard going to the grid, and that's all about tyre preparation. Yeah, it almost feels like the, the hardest part before the race. Um, you know, we have to drive on the pit limiter to the grid, so we can't carry a lot of speed. We still want to try and put a lot of temperature into the tires so you know we're weaving a lot and these steering wheels are just uh, just very heavy so uh, a little bit of work before the race what have you learned from yesterday stuff in terms of trying to stay out of trouble and keep the race clean early on have you guys understood you know this is where the danger zones are eight nine H how are you going to play the early part of the race yeah we talk about the strategy a lot obviously um, you know these races are just so dynamic with everyone trying to get into position and trying to put themselves at the front. Um, obviously, sometimes that comes at an energy, energy expense, but uh, that's that's kind of part of the game, isn't it? Um, today, it's two laps shorter, so maybe two laps less of, uh, of chaos, let's say. But uh, let's see how we go. I think, um, you know, we have a clear idea what to do. Now uh, we need to try and execute that. All right. uh, looking cool. That's good luck good. with that. Uh, let's go this way. Yes. Let's nice. see if we can find. I I'd like to see, I can see Oliver Rowland um, David walking towards us. Yeah, but Nick Cassidy Obviously. there as well. Should we Nick Cassidy's quick? there. Oh, what should we do? Should we do Ollie first? Let's do Ollie. Coming? Let's do Ollie first. Stop him. Stop him Stop. moving. Stop. <laughs> right. Um, well done. Leading the championship. Uh, didn't get the spraying the champagne moment for the victory, but uh, it's so far so good. Absolutely. I mean, you know, to have four podiums in a row, obviously be gifted the win last night. It's not how you want to win, but um, I'll definitely take the points that come with it. But uh, yeah, it's been a huge surprise for us to start the season and hopefully we can keep it going. I was saying in the, in the race yesterday, you, you really look like a driver who's p finding the gaps, trying to just stay in, in the right place in that early phase of the race. But also that choosing the moment of when to go is massively critical, isn't it? Yeah, well, for me yesterday, it started to get a bit dangerous when I was around 9th and 10th. Like, there was contacts, people doing a bit silly things, so that's when I decided to go. The problem you've got today, everybody, lose, everybody understands what happened yesterday, so people are going to try and do a bit what I did, a bit what some other people did, and I think you have to be a little bit different on where you choose your energy, so we'll see today. All right, well, I hope you, uh, you stay in the championship lead at the end Good of the day. Good luck. Um, I think we had two drivers over there for well, a Cassidy's moment. here. Oh, he's, he's come he's, back. He's spun behind you, David. Yeah, okay, so he was over, actually. Sorry, if we can jump in here. So you were having a little chat with uh, one of your competitors there. Is that you sort of discussing tactics for the chess game that comes until the last few laps? Yeah, I was actually asking if he thinks it's going to be a chess game. What do you guys reckon? I loved yesterday, all that bashing and what have you, but I know that's not what you want, and you it lost your front wing. It looks for you. Yeah, I think when you win those ones, you think it's the best thing ever. And when, you, when you're in the pit lane, you think it's, oh, it's the worst. So you know what we're like. We're always opinionated depending on the result. And we're just going to look forward to today, have a clean one and see what we can do. But can I ask you about yesterday? Because obviously, you know, your race kind of ended when you got in that collision with Jeff at the chicane. In hindsight, do you think putting yourself in that position around the outside, you know, it's a pinch point. Is that something you still think you'd try and do today? Um... It's a good question. I think I didn't really have a, a choice. You, you're kind of, you're in front of the guy, you, you turn in, he knows you're there, and you are dependent on them, but I think... Um, I've caught you off guard here, haven't I? No, it's, um, I'm trying to work out politically what's best to say. And I, and I got a bit... God, I was starting to feel for you. And I got a bit stuck. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll let you go think about the actual race. Good luck. Good luck. Wow, God, I thought he was getting emotional there. We're going to have to get the tissues out. Oh, very good. I think uh, he must have picked up his partner's sunglasses, by the way. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, let's keep wandering down, because Antonio Felix da Costa, 
I feel like we need to give him a hug, don't we? He's had a, a pretty, pretty tough 24 hours, you'd have to say. Um, yes. And he's starting, David, after that track limits violation from qualifying, starting, well, we're still walking, trying to find him, I which am. indicates just how far back he is. But he is on the back row of the grid there, car number 13. Oh, wow. uh, Lucas Degrassi in the app Cupra up here on the left. Um, Mitch Evans, he started pole yesterday. He's got a wave, He's got a cool, wave from a racing driver. Oh, well, well let's, uh, let's jump in here. Mitch, thanks for the wave. It makes me feel good. loved. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are you going to do? It didn't work out from pole yesterday, so this is your day to make amends. Yeah, well, hopefully. Look, um, I was probably sat in on pole the worst race of the season, so um, it was really tough out there yesterday. Like, it was, it was, it was carnage. It was wild. So, look, I'm, like, on the other end of the spectrum here. Um, but the race is going to be a bit faster. It's going to be a little bit different. So um, if I could reverse the two qualifiers, it would have been nice. But uh, anyway, this is the reality, and we've got to try and deal with it. But now you've had a day to watch how everyone else races. Have you, have you sort of marked who are the danger ones you don't want to be next to when you go into that chicane? Yeah, I do. I think you know who as well. <laughs> <laughs> well okay. Just trying to provoke the answer. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, there was some question all driving out there yesterday. But anyway, um, look, everyone's kind of learned from yesterday as well with where to be, what position, and, and uh, yeah, we, we want to be at certain parts of the race and who not to race. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll find out today. But obviously, it's a, it's a shorter race. Uh, a little bit faster, but still a similar style of racing, but just done in a different way. Okay, good luck. Good luck with that. Right, you wanted Da Costa. We have. Yeah, he is. The, the I, I feel like we need to hug it out. First. Yeah. It's just, oh, no. you know. I don't need hugs. It's fine. All good. Uh, you are unbelievably pragmatic and okay with uh, how yesterday played out. I mean, is it because is it because you got the emotional high off the win and the podium? You know, honestly, like you had the, that moment, didn't you? Which is so important for a driver. Uh, maybe, but honestly, I do care a lot about the integrity and, and the good of the sport. And I felt like the sport lost yesterday. There's no, no doubt that we did something that didn't comply with a piece of paper. But should we sometimes be a little bit more pragmatic on how we penalize certain things and common sense, maybe? But you know, the FIA did their job. We we made a mistake, and the the win was taken away from us, which hurts. But yeah. It is 20 seconds first, you can do it again. I mean, I'm, I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> right, right, we're right behind you. And if all else fails, you could be a politician. The way you answered was beautiful. I'd vote for you. I learned a bit from you when... Yeah, <laughs> learned a little bit from you. All right, we're going to throw to Nikki now. Good luck. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I'm at the front of the grid uh, with Ian James, team principal at McLaren. Uh, and let's just talk about how Jake's doing at the moment, because he put in a phenomenal lap in qualifying. I think it was a quarter of a second faster than John Eric Verne, who is a, well, he's a Formula E original. He's got so much experience, and Jake show, showed him who was boss. Yeah, Jeff's, um, Jeff's not too, too shabby himself, so I think he gave uh, Jake a good run for his money. But Jake's been on fire all weekend. It's such a shame yesterday, obviously, that we weren't able to capitalize on his good quality performance then. So the pole here today, very, very well deserved indeed. And it just goes to show, you know, that momentum that he built up over last year, what he's capable of. Well, I think we are just being told that the national anthem is about to start here. So we'll have to end that, uh, what was going to be a beautiful interview a little bit short and uh, take a listen to the Italian national anthem. Well, it should be coming on ever so shortly, but we're not hearing it, and they are conducting it down there on the grid. So the amazing performance of Whisper means we have dead air. Thank you. 
that national anthem avenue. Uh, now, the, uh, these two guys, in terms of David and Karun, uh, they've been on it as all season to get them into the Gen 3 car. And finally, we've relented. Let's find out what happens, shall we? Let the carnage commence. All right, Karun, I'm about to have my first ever experience of a Formula E car, actually, of any fully electric racing car. I did Not many have... things you're still a virgin at. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know, reassuring, at 53, I'm still getting a first-time experience. I, I'm really interested to see what you think, because the weirdest thing I found when I first drove an FE car is the lack of sound. Because you just hear rattles of suspension, you hear the motors, you hear the brakes. I'm going to hear my back creaking. <laughs> it's a car, it's strapped in, Selects no gear because there is no gears. Yeah. Basically, pull the middle paddle. Yeah. Something will tell me I'm in drive. Yeah. And then you're going left. Left, left. I'm just waiting on my helmet, and then when that turns up, I reckon I'm going to jump no, in. No, 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 no. You're not going first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just go. Just, I'll get warmed up for you. Let's just. Oh, let's my just heart play. has broken. You don't trust me to take it out first. No. What a waste of tyres, you know, he's clearly got no Scottish blood in him. He's all show and no go, that Karun, isn't he? I'd say this was a fairly cautious out of which is a bit worrying. That tells me that on cold tyres, this car might be quite challenging. Really tricky little chicane there, very unforgiving. I think I'll be very careful through there. How was it? You'll be glad to know, DC, I gave you, um... At least warmed up the rear tyres for you. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Anything I should be particularly aware of? Uh, the chicane's tighter than you think. It's going to be a bit of a voyage of discovery for PC. He's driven so many different things. Well, he hasn't got lost yet. He's not a showman, really, is he? That's probably why he's more successful. When you first drive an FE car, you, you just have to get used to the, the sensations of driving it. You haven't got that sound, you haven't got the vibrations, you just got to get used to driving um, and feeling the car in a different way. It's a lot smoother. A lot smoother than I expected. You know, in just yeah. terms of ride, it's yeah. a bit like a magic carpet. I expected it to feel a lot harder. I reckon if you had about another 5,000 laps, I might be competitive. Well, let's uh, get a testing schedule. <laughs> yeah, shall we do that? <laughs> shall we start our own team? Yeah, we'll start our own team. You think? Uh, yeah, I'll think. Yeah. I'll think. <laughs> Ah, you two. You know, I've got to get into you two about that in a minute, because I want to know how he got on, but pole sitters behind us. Jake, any chance of a word quickly? Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Um, Unbelievably, unbelievable in qualifying today. Got to say, he was great yesterday and obviously got punished with a penalty. Um, how are you feeling going into it? Yeah, good. I mean, any, any time you get pole, it's, uh, it's a good start to the day. I should have had it yesterday, to be honest. I'm, I somehow managed uh, to claw defeat from the jaws of victory yesterday <laughs> in qualifying. And, um, yeah, starting 22nd was always going to be difficult, but, I mean, now I start the complete opposite in P1, so hopefully it makes it a bit smoother. I mean, obviously, you, you know my world from football, but I've been listening to these two taking it all in. Um, and this race in particular, it seems leading from the front isn't always an advantage. That lot are going to be right at you, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, we're expecting a similar race to yesterday. That being said, we have more energy to use per lap from the beginning just because of the two less lap race distance. So we're expecting lift points to be later, but nevertheless, we you won't see the leader wanting to lead. So I don't think I'll be going a lights to flag, let's put it that way. And what about like, attack mode strategy today? Uh, any different? I think it just depends on what's happening around you at the time of the race. It's really difficult to plan for it, in all honesty. There's certain guys, and you probably saw it yesterday, that like the idea of going to the lead and then immediately taking attack mode. To basically, you just want to, you only want to lose one place maximum. And if you lose three or four, then you're in the, the realms of all the mess in the middle. And it seems like those last uh, five laps at the moment where the engineers go, Jake, get your foot down, flat out time, off you go. You looking forward to that bit? That'll be, that'll be great if they tell me. I don't think I've ever had that in FE, so that'll be great. <laughs> Uh, well, you know what? I'd like to see you win today, and I'd like to see your team beat the Arsenal as well, so best of luck. Do, do, you, do you want to talk about your result yesterday? No, we'll forget about that, Jake. All the best, yeah? <laughs> Thanks for joining us, pal. All the best. Um, right, you two. Talk, talk me through it. Have you got, like, a newfound respect to these fellas in these cars? Because, I mean, 
very different to what you're used to, David. Well, the great thing is, it just confirms it, it's a race car. Yeah. And I think when you've never driven one, it's like, well, what kind of voodoo do they need to do to actually drive it? Highly complex when you're in a, a zone like they are, qualifying and racing the car. But in terms of actually driving away and driving a lap at the track, I found it very smooth. Power delivery, I thought, was, was perfectly acceptable. I think because I've driven a modern Formula One hybrid, then I, I think I was maybe expecting a bit more <laughs> on the acceleration front, but that's not to take away from yeah. just how impressive the car was. Well, got something to say? No, for me, it was a good chance to look at the circuit, actually. Okay. I had never been here before, so I've never driven the cars, but it, um, uh, you know, I think for me, that's what I learned, is actually how challenging this track is. We look at it and go, it's big and it's wide and more open than what they used to in FE, but it comes with its own set of challenges in terms of having to carry the corner speed, yeah. the apex speed, and, and riding those curbs. All, all me and Katie care about is who was the quickest to penalty, but we'll have to find out another time by the sounds of it. We know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go find Nicky, show you. Where are you? I'm with one of the fastest drivers in Formula E, John Eric Verne, who is about to uh, have the 25th front row start in his Formula E career. A phenomenal achievement. But John Eric Verne, we did just see you there, just having a bit of a moment, deep in thought. What is going through your mind just before the start of this race? Uh, preparing for war. I mean, <laughs> considering how yesterday, I mean, how the, the race went yesterday, obviously it's going to be uh, yeah, very chaotic and, uh, you know, you, you need to be uh, to be ready to attack, to defend, have the eyes absolutely everywhere and uh, it requires a bit of uh, concentration and, uh, and focus, yeah, for sure. And no doubt you want to make up for, you know, missing out on the podium yesterday because, of course, you did get that five-second time penalty because of what happened at Turn 8. Is that going to be... You mean podium taken out, not missing out. Okay, take, take, taken out, taken out. Uh, you are correct, your English is better than mine. Uh, frustrating, but I'm sure, are you going to take turn eight with a bit more respect? Sorry? Not at all, there was nothing I would change, I did nothing wrong. And, um, yeah, I mean, the steward didn't even want to hear what I had to say. So, I mean, I would drive exactly the same way, and if he's not happy, well, it's his fault. I mean, he... It's a tight corner and I already left him out of room, so um, I would love the same way. Good, excellent. Well, that's what we like to hear, uh, the words of a champion there, Jean-Eric Verne. Um, now, we can actually see, I don't know whether we're going to have time to chat to him, but Nico Muller is just down here getting ready. Um, he's spraying himself with liquid, so we're going to leave him to get his preparation underway uh, and head back to you, JJ. Uh, thank you very much, Nicky. Well, this is a uh, season that the sport has shown that there's no absolutely telling what will happen on any given day. It's a brilliant sport, so here's more detail on that. And we'll take that opportunity to cut off from the world feed uh, as we prepare for the start. And welcome up to the commentary box for the first time today. It's Ed Hunter and Jess Balls alongside me as well. Still from qualifying, down in the pits, we've got Omi and Josh T., <clears throat> I've got no frog in my throat at the moment. I've still got sore throat from yesterday after the F1, so the, sorry, the Formula E and the MotoGP sprint race. I've got more to do. Hello, Ed. How are you? Good, thanks. Uh, endurance race I was doing yesterday. Uh, the server crashed with about 90 minutes left to go. So basically oh. the last uh, half hour when I went away for dinner uh, didn't matter in the end anyway. So I didn't really miss too much, unfortunately. But as for Formula E... Uh, while I was waiting, that was when I found out uh, DaCosta had been uh, disqualified for the having the wrong uh, throttle pedal spring uh, damper, essentially, mm. which uh, controversially, uh, everyone else has gone, oh, FI and the stewards are terrible, Formula is awful. I, I'm going, well, it always seems to be Porsche that get these things wrong. <laughs> Puebla 2021, they s sent the admin in for the wrong tyres. They went and put the qualifying tyres in instead of the race tyres and Berline lost the win. Uh, London last year. They sent De Costa out with a tyre that they knew had a slow puncher. De Costa reported over the radio. They said uh, no information needed because they didn't want him sent into the pit lane by race direction. Uh, failed scrutineering at the end, and then they submitted a protest saying, oh, three minutes is a bit harsh. Why can't you just give us a five-second penalty for not meeting the uh, <laughs> tyre pressure limit? And now we got this spring thing, which, yeah, okay. Uh, maybe they're not the only team that fell foul of it with uh, them not... Un uh, Spark Racing Technologies not announcing it, uh, the change that they made. But mm. the only reason they had the old, they allowed the old springs is because they hadn't manufactured enough of them. So, uh, so yeah, it's it's in, as they cut to ads right as they uh, throw to uh, Nicky and it's David getting Porter, worse, you know, isn't it? Like, yeah. in interesting. Yeah, I, TNT they've got to put the ads in somewhere. Uh, it's not the BBC, so we haven't got that uh, luxury of no ads. But uh, but yeah, it is. 
it it is a bit unideal, and it, you like you can't help but feel losing. Um, uh, who, who was the who was the previous uh, Vernon K? Yeah, Vernon losing K Vernon K, has, K yeah. uh, and going to pay TV that has to throw in so many ads. It feels like a downgrade on uh, what we had with Channel Four last season, even though. Obviously, Channel 4 didn't always broadcast it on TV. So we have actually got it on TV, but God knows if anyone's going to go down to TNT Sports 4 mm. to look for it. But 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 yeah, um, I, I feel like... I, I know I've gone a bit of a, rant, a Jess style Sausage Curb style rant here, but... Uh, I did the Sausage Curb uh, rant yesterday, Ed. Yeah, I know, but I feel... I, I, I feel like um, it always seems to be Porsche that get it wrong, and then it's the stewards in the FIA and Formula E they get the blame for Porsche when they can't follow the rule because they, they weren't on top of things fundamentally. And you can sort of point the fingers at the other teams as well, but it always seems to be Porsche that get caught out and they really need to mm. make sure they're constantly rereading the rules because they always seem to misread them, it would seem. Well, Porsche's standpoint on this was the fact is that the the line of the rule, because the, t- the springs that were manufactured, there's the red spring... That was manufactured for season nine, and then the grey spring yeah, that was a manufactured. Coated spring and a non-coated spring, haven't we? That's yes. what we're the issue is. Here. Yeah, yeah, and it's like and they, they, they're also saying there's no performance advantage. But I heard some teams saying that technically, uh, because it's the throttle pedal, that it could suit certain drivers' uh, driving styles, saving energy a bit more with the older spring potentially. Although I think that's hearsay and speculation, mm. so they might be absolutely no credence to that. I'm sure De Costa and Porsche would disagree with that, but. Just, so to me, I think even if uh, whichever way you look at it, uh, like the Costa said, we fell out of a piece of paper. Just so happens that piece of paper is the 2024 FIA uh, sporting and technical regulations for the season. So it's not just any random bit of paper. But importantly, a piece of paper that had a line crossed out through it midway through the season in the gap between Sao Paulo and the previous race, of course, uh, in Diria. So we had that, we had that month's break and... It was then the FIA drew a line in that you can't use the old spring anymore, but they didn't tell Once the they teams that. they enough springs, they were surely going to do it at some point. So yeah. you've got to be prepared for that sort of thing. Because the you, we, we, you can say, oh, they changed the rule and it was unfair, but they changed the rule for everyone. I'm, but they didn't Verline tell anyone. Well, they didn't so it tell wasn't it. just the cost car. Verline apparently failed it as well, but because his check wasn't on the top three cars being checked, yeah. uh, that meant that... He gets to keep that 17th position for all the good it does him because they didn't get any points for that. But it's but yeah, a crazy so it was, system. I thought, mistakenly for oh, it was just a Costa that got caught out here, but it was Verline as well. So it's a Porsche. We know Porsche definitely have fallen foul across the board of this, but there could be other teams we know that've got that's that spring in there sort of spares cupboard that they might be chucking out quite quickly now. Mm, a spring in the step would certainly be an advantage for today in energy saving. It's two laps less, Jess. Yesterday's good. thank you, sorry. I'm here all week. Yesterday's Peloton Star race, uh, we said in the commentary, was getting to the point of uh, over danger levels with the amount of cars we started to see getting launched in the brake testing areas. Two laps less today. Are we hopeful that it's going to be a little bit easier or are we still expecting a jungle mess in the first half of the race? I think there's probably going to be similar strategies in, in the first half of the race, I've got to admit. I mean, I don't want to see that style of racing, but unfortunately, we may get it. But they, they, they should know what the other drivers are doing around them as well. And if they want to avoid the mess that is happening, then they should avoid that four five wide potentially. But who knows what's going to happen? I think this wouldn't have happened if they didn't introduce the attack charge because the attack charge should be there. Otherwise, what's the point in Mazzano, basically? But we still had a good second half of the race yesterday with a good battle for the win. Hopefully, we can see that today. Literally, anyone on this grid can win the race today. That is how this style of racing can be. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Jess. Uh, the other thing that was interesting, ERT, both their cars just hung back for pretty much the entirety of the first three quarters of the race yesterday. And then they were able to speed through the pack right at the end. Dan ticked him eventually getting up to fourth. Sede Kamara getting up to about seventh before being disqualified, sadly, for power overuse on the final lap where the power train started to derate. It's a similar thing to what happened to Buemi at Hyderabad last year where he lost the podium mm. because of that. So I wonder if everyone is going to try and do the ERT thing and just hang at the back of the pack, especially your Ats and your Mahindras that aren't quite as efficient. What about Da Costa? 
starts 22nd. We know he can win the race with power saving. Would he stay at the back for the first half of the race, then start charging More his way through? Car, though, the Porsche. He's probably going to try and go through the pack quite quickly to get, stay up with where Verline is and then work together. That was what they were trying to do before Verline lost his front wing yesterday. Mm. And that's what the DS Penske's also tried to do as well. Well done. Successfully. Well done. It's the Turn 8 9 chicanes. David Coulthard and Nicky Fields, part of the track where yesterday we saw a lot of drama and a lot of gravel. DC is talking about that gravel now. To the beach, uh, but thankfully they can pass by to the other side of this barrier. Now, what's, I think, quite important to understand about this one is its tyres behind here. So we have seen some people hit this, this sort of uh, conveyor belt, but it doesn't damage the car. So they can be a bit more aggressive here than maybe they'd want to. But this was the scene of an incident between Cassidy and John Eric Verne yesterday, which they weren't happy about. No, not at all. I mean, I think John Eric Verne described it as the most unfair penalty in his career because he got a five second um, uh, five second time penalty at the end of the race, which basically took away his podium finish. Uh, but talk us through that moment. I mean, could he have done it differently? Well, he should have done, I suppose. Well, look, he's sort of reacted to the end of this, and I think they're all overreacting a little bit because, in fairness, most of your Formula E career is spent in unforgiving street circuits, <laughs> so they probably keep a wide berth. But I think now they're getting into the second day of racing here. You can get away with kissing that, but as he came back across, he did so in front of Nick, and Nick obviously couldn't react to that, and he lost his front wing. That's part of the racing. Expect it to be a bit messy again today. Yeah, well, hopefully they've learned a thing or two, and uh, there won't be too much kissing going on, but who knows what's going to happen in today's race. Back to you guys. Yeah, I don't think any of us do, Nicky, after yesterday's race. Um, I mean, always enjoy this time uh, of the day. The drivers on the grid, they're in the zone. They're ready to go, uh, Katie. Um, as we were just walking off grid there, you had a really good chat with uh, Ian James, the, uh, the McLaren team principal. Uh, can you uh, share what he said to you? Yeah, he was basically saying that they're really happy to be back on, on the form today. I think they had a lot of bad luck yesterday, obviously yeah. not the result they wanted or deserved really in the race. Um, he was saying, great to be on pole, but if anyone can tell me how to convert that into a race win <laughs> on this track, then that would be good to know. I think it just shows how different this is to any other race. Normally being on pole is a blessing, but not so straightforward here. Yeah, not so straightforward, definitely. Um, anything else you've seen in there, Karun, with regards to I don't know, anyone in particular you think has been in form, who could come like, through the pack and make something happen today? Yeah, I think Sam Bird and Nick Cassidy are two drivers that we haven't really talked about, but they were both in contention. They, Sam was leading the race for a while and then cycled in the pack, got a puncture. Uh, Cassidy was right in that fight up at the front as well, broke the front wing. Verline broke the front wing. I think there's, there's drivers who were potentially in that fight who didn't score the points, and they will be desperate to, to make sure they, you know, have a, a better day today. Uh, all I heard you say there is broke the front wing, uh, broke the front wing, and broke the front wing. Uh, it it sounds like there was a lot of incidents going on. Yeah. What, what, was it a race that was on the edge? Was you happy kind of where it sat? I, I thought the early part was a little bit too messy for yeah. my liking. Um, I think today with a slightly higher speed, you know, less reliance on the energy saving, it could be a bit, bit cleaner. Um, but I think it'll still be the case with the first 10 laps. It will be still a little bit chaotic before it settles down. You expecting something similar yourself? That's what Karun's saying there, Katie, or...? Yeah, I think I'd want to be in the top five, just break away. I think there was a lot of elbows out that we didn't necessarily focus on yesterday when we were looking at the front of the race. So, yeah, I'd get out front. Uh, well, it's all right ahead of us right now. Um, this is the second race of this doubleheader here in Masano. Karun, you better go and find yourself uh, into that commentary booth because it's about to start. And I'll leave you with... DC and Tom Brooks. what's going to happen today yesterday was an absolute madness but it is the moto gp venue now plays host to formula e for the second time in two days we are racing at the marco simoncelli world circuit here in Mazzano, named after an upcoming legend whose time was tragically cut short in the premier class of moto gp a fellow home venue here along with valentino rossi 
It's a modified circuit compared to what we have in a MotoGP. It's a 3.382 meter circuit. The first corner, a hard right hairpin, double apexed before turns two and three and four open it up. Turn five, six and seven, the normal layout. Then we have a chicane in eight and nine, crucial for regening energy. The last part of the track, the same as MotoGP. Turn 12, exit line has the attack mode. Here's the starting grid then from back to front. For what we've been seeing, Antonio Felix da Costa with a penalty from qualifying, stripped of his time alongside Johan Druvler on row 11. Row 10 sees Nick Freeze alongside Eduardo Mortar and the two Mahindra Racings. Then on row 9, it's Dan Tigtum alongside Sebastian Buemi. Row 8 sees Norman Nato start 16th. Mitch Evans, 15th for Jaguar. It's all right, the race was run on the road yesterday for 14th. That's where Lucas Degrassi starts on row 7 alongside him is Sasha Fenestras. 6th row of the green sees Maximilian Gunther in 12th. Sergio Sete Camara starts in 11th place. Row 5 sees Oliver Rowland start in 10th, the championship leader. Jake Dennis, the man who's second in the title, is alongside him in 9th. Nick Cassidy starts in 8th position on the 4th row of the grid. Alongside him is Robin Frines in P7. And then follow Ed for the cars further forward because on row 4, it's Nick Cassidy starting in 8th position. Alongside him, Robin... Uh, Ro Let's start again. Row 3 in 6th position, it's Stoffel Van Dorn. Alongside him is Sam Bird in the McLaren. Row 2 sees Nico Muller starting in 4th position as well for the App Cooper. 3rd on the grid for Pascal Verlein. Can he get the championship leader back? And on row 1, we take it with Jean-Marie Vern and Jake Hughes for a pole position that he should have had yesterday, but got it back up. Yeah, Moto E race here as well, of course, as we were saying earlier on in the broadcast. Moto GP, Moto 2, Moto 3, and Moto GP run here, but uh, mainly, of course, it's just known as the Moto GP layout for livery of racing. And it's the first circuit, actually, that Moto E and Formula E both share, but in different veins. Alongside me in the commentary box is Jess Ball and Ed Hunter. And Ed, starting with you as they get ready to roll to the grid. We should be in for a good race today. I'm sorry, I think I must have put you off there because I didn't have a stop of Van Dorn on the grid because I ran <laughs> out of space for him. But yeah, good old stuff. But uh, I'm sure he'll have a good race from, uh, where is he, like six or seven from yeah. the grid, isn't he? But yeah, this whole first part of the race is just all going to be about survival, essentially, much like it was yesterday. So... Those at the back are going to be looking to make up a fair bit of ground as well, but you really want to stay behind someone and just save energy in the slipstream. For Jake Hughes, I'd be very, very surprised if he ends up in the top three at the end of this. Uh, and I'd also Here be very go. upset because I don't like the phone. Lights are out. We're ready to start the procedure. Start the countdown. All five lights are on. Let the madness in Mazzano begin again. It's a good start from Hughes. Vern will come across down towards turn one. Vern will have the lead. Coming around the outside, we see Pascal Verlein in an unusual position going so early on. Hughes muscles his way back into contention of one. Coming outside is Verlein. Vern and then Bird comes in to fourth position. Great, da great start from Sam up from fifth. He's held that well. De Costa's up to 20th. That made up two places. The envision to dropping back. De Costa is making his way through, but now he's stuck behind. Uh, to freeze and Mortara. Sete Kamara's dropped down. Dropped down three places. Up for Cassidy. Up into sixth position. What a start from him from eighth position. He's really moved down the field as we come in towards turn seven and eight for the first time, Ed. Clean start from everybody, but now it's the chicane. And now they're lifting and coasting again, even though it's two laps less. Yeah, Cassidy will be uh, thinking about what happened yesterday with Vern because, oh, here we go. Cassidy again going for the outside line, gaining a few positions, getting up right behind Nico Muller as there's that massive concertina effect. And they've all got to somehow thread the needle and they get through without crashing into each other. But all the walls there. And look, Buemi, or is that Frein? No, it is Buemi, sorry, getting a little bit off track there. But Robin Frein yesterday was saying how much he hates this style of racing, basically. And he's saying, oh, I'm just expecting more of the same. Is look, he's going up the inside then of Nico Muller of return 12 and it's going to be hung on the outside here if he's not careful oh just about squeezed through first lap done everyone's still doing the peloton style yes that's what we were hoping that wouldn't happen but at least they're a bit more racy today than they were in race one yesterday it's less lifting and coasting josh it's more side by side race which is a lot better but there's people like switching positions all over the show as well as john air fern is being boxed in by pascal Valla and nick cassie cassie's had a 
great start and you can as you can see the time tower is going all over the place so it's hard to tell which is where but it's one of the Mahindras I think it's Nico Muller having a little bit of a fight as well Sam Burr's fighting with Verline and we've got Robin Franks and Roland up there too there's just so much action everywhere you look but the only difference to yesterday between yesterday and today is who's been able to hold on to the lead as you can see Nick Cassidy Trying to get past John Evan, I believe. Yep, Evans lost the lead at the start yesterday. He dropped down into fourth position by the end of the first lap. That's not happened here today, but now Vern's going to go around the outside line. Lifting and coasting. At the inside comes Verline passing. Uh, well, that's Verline passing Casti, and Casti repasses him in the braking zone as well. So Verline tried the outside maneuver for P3, didn't work out. Muller is on the back of him, and right there comes a wild Sam Bird sending him around the outside line. He's going to take it as well to the battle with Verline. That's going to go right round the outside and secure himself fourth place. Great move there from Sam Bird. On board with Stoffel Van Dorn making his way through the field as well. He's down. He lost three places on the start. There. So is Jake Dennis, and now he's battling with Roland, and that's Freins ahead, lifting off to freeze down into 17th. To Costa's up into that 17th position now as we cross the line with lap three to go of this race. Yeah, I wonder how much energy Ooh. Sam Bird is using though to try and get up with this lead pack. Then as Vern holds off Nick Cassidy into turn one. But yeah, McLaren are starting to control this race. With Hughes starting to look a little bit more comfortable up front. Vern not attacking as much. Evans ready? Sandwich to the front. Happy for you to catch it. Start moving. Evans is fine. So yeah. Evans down in 19th, remember? Yeah. You said about he was going to stand back and do energy. He's just been told that he's okay on the energy front and can start pushing forward as they exit turn seven. Down to the 8 9 chicane. Muller in the battle, Bird in there too with Verline and the lead changing around the outside, Vern trying to have a look through, Bird's past Verline as they jump over the chicane, everyone making it through safely this time around and as you said Jess they are a little bit more slowly slowly but I've got a feeling here that Hughes being out front, he's going to be using the most energy because he wants to have that and taking the attack mode goes Hughes, goes Vern, and I think Bird take no Hughes has, has Hughes Muller. kept the lead? Hughes leading the race. Hughes does lead from Cassidy up to second. Vern was the one who lost a position, so Hughes has taken attack mode and crucially kept the lead of the race there, Jess. That's big, big news. That was because John and Vern also took attack mode at the same time, but JQ is under pressure from Nick Cassidy and John Van to get the lead in towards turn three as well. We've got the Jaguars trying to make ground as well and the likes of Roland and Muller, the ones that want to get their tap mode ace out because some, for some of them it's not relevant in terms of the chat. As we're seeing, I think, is that one of the... Uh, Cooper Robin trying Fryant. to go for a move. No, it's in vision, Robin Bryant. Sorry, Ed. Van Lee. Yeah, no, it's just Bryant going side by side. Roland, it's, oh my goodness, they are starting to punch up. So all the leaders have realized they've been using way too much energy and now I think they've started to back themselves up into the sort of midfield pack now. So Evans, unfortunately for him, he's been caught by the people in attack mode now at the back. And that's actually losing him track position. As Degrassi loses a load of places and drops to 15th. Oh, Hughes has dropped down to fourth place. Hughes has dropped down to fourth. Cassidy and Verline have gone through. <laughs> So as you say, those on attack mode now desperately trying to save energy. Those who aren't are still meeting their criteria. On the rumble strips there goes, I think, Someone's uh, it was NATO. NATO hit the um, sausage curbs and got a little bit sideways. He dropped a couple of places. But those who've taken the four, four minutes, there's been a couple of them, is up the inside. That's NATO trying to get through. And that's Dennis as well, trying to pass Roland coming through. Roland trying to pass Gunther at the same time. They're all three of them sort of side by side. That's turn one. Dennis goes through and takes the pair of them into the breaking zone. Does he tap the back of the McLaren? No, but Nick McLaren's going to be in a bit of a sandwich there. Sam Bird almost into the tyre wall. Through goes Roland. Dennis has been filtered out back as he was on the outside line coming towards turn one and two. So Roland moves up to sixth, Bird down to seventh. And now we're seeing Van Dorn nearly get into the back of Frines. Coming back around the outside is Norman Nato. Sends a Camaro on the inside line and it's all going wrong. Verline takes the lead but it was Cassidy who led a lap. 
So very crucial, Josh, that Verlon hasn't taken his attack mode yet, so he's got to take it at some point. But I know Verlon will want to take his second attack mode ASAP as well. Interesting to see that some people want to use most of their attack mode now, like Smortora, Fenestrat and Defraid, as we're seeing more battles up front, and Tictum as well. But the ones near the front, they only want to use two minutes and have a very long attack mode in the end. It's Kaz T Team Radio. Pascal's going to use attack, so Cassidy takes the lead. He's taken the two minutes, as you say. Muller will go through to second place. Verline takes the two minutes then. That means he has to use six minutes in his second attack mode. Cassidy now officially leads the lap again as the McLaren side by side. That's Roland on the outside, almost on the grass, touching it as well. Roland makes the move on Hughes, who's battling back. I thought there was a car off in the gravel there, but it's not. It's a seagull flying back across the track. <laughs> I was almost going to react there. A seagull? There. Yeah, a little seagull inside. Well, we are in a coastal area here in Emilia-Romagna. Not too far away from it. As they fly back through. Casti's out of attack mode, so he can now start meeting his criteria for energy management and then take a further six minutes. I think they all want to get rid of that attack mode early in the race, save energy, and then go when they know they've got enough for the end dead. I think that's the case, isn't it? Could be, and look who's making the most progress at the moment. It's Oliver Rowland, the eventual winner from yesterday, and the current championship lead. He's gone from 10th to 4th then, and he's ahead of Paul Sitter Hughes. So Rowland is just behind those top three, which is exactly where you want to be at this phase of the race. But behind, it is an absolute hornet's nest of drivers all <laughs> squabbling two plus two. Plus two, plus two for Rowland. Said that. Plus two. Okay, so that means he's got plus two energy compared to the people he's fighting with just ahead then. As look at this, is that Cassidy yeah. going for his second attack mode? So he's getting them out of the way in that change. Bird does it too. Bird takes two. So he's got Muller six minutes left. Oh, wow, what? Yeah, Muller's here, got the lead. So Muller leads onto lap seven. I can't even work out. So Muller leads a lap time. There's a bit of contact from the McLaren and Oliver Rowland as they head towards the last corner as Rowland goes off the track there on the replay, Josh. Yeah, that might give a track limits warning. Remember, the stewards are very cautious with that this morning with Da Costa uh, dropping his time because of it. Uh, several of the cars trying to go to the inside line, coming to primary right down at turn five. Just take it carefully, guys. It's a tricky corner. We've all got it okay. So down into turn seven. McLaren's got a bit of uh, problems. Comes the V. Hughes as they come into the braking zone. Double yellow, on the inside. double yellow turn seven. So where's that? Is that ahead of us? It's behind. It's what it, whatever's happened, it's behind Bird. And it's Frines. Robin Frines is off into the gravel. And the suspension and on the front, front left. Front There's gotta be a safety car. Gotta be a safety car. And you're right, Jess. It is. It is a safety car. The safety car has been deployed, and that is gonna help everybody on attack mode because they're now going to save more energy. There's the safety car confirmation now on our screen. So you are completely right, Jess. Car beached in the gravel, safety car deployed. And I suppose this is a good thing, isn't it, Ed? Because now everyone on this attack mode aren't going to be using as much energy as you would do. So effectively, because attack mode's useless here, they've all got rid of it at the perfect time. And uh, look at uh, that Roland and Hughes there. So Roland made a move on Hughes just as the safety guard was called cool and had to give that position back as we're going to see a replay of exactly what happened to Robin Frines. He, oh, and it was... Oh, was it Bird on the inside? He got squeezed in between Bird and uh, on the Andretti's, I think. Yeah. He yeah, man, like gut sandwich. You okay? I think Water. it was Nato. I think it was Nato that it got sandwiched with because that was the nearest one on the timings. Brian sounds pretty grumpy about that, and but being... this is really bad, this safety car for yeah. the group of uh, Evans was leading, remember? Evans, Bramey, Tictum, Deruvula, they were all hanging back to save energy, and now this equalizes it because everyone up front has a chance to save energy as well. We will get the added laps at the end, of course, yeah. which compensates a little bit, but uh, this is really good for that lead pack, and especially for Nico Muller oh, now, oh, oh, who oh, can oh, the oh. app to get itself oh, on the podium. Oh, no, what's going on here? Safety car slowing the field safety... down. Going very slow. And, it, and everyone was pouncing up behind it. Oh, it. oh, it was Dennis, not NATO. No, no, this is further on. This is eight and nine. Something's happened there into the wall. That's Dennis there going go. through on two. I'm being told it was Bird and Da Costa who funneled Frines in the turn seven part of the track. Oh, why? Da Costa just getting very bad luck recently. 
Yeah, he's up into third, up into 11th now after starting 20 seconds, so he's halfway through the field. Uh, safety car lap, any, if we go above three minutes 59, uh, we will have one added lap. Right now we're at two minutes, so we will have at least one lap added to the second Mizano e Prix as the car retrieved from the garage via the JCB. What do they call those? Cranes, lorry, trucks? What do they call them? Recovery vehicles. Nice. Yeah, just call it recovery vehicles. Yeah. Let's have a little look at the replay at the of the incident, Josh. So here is uh, Freund to the right-hand side. He's got the light of uh, Bird oh. and yeah, one of the other Porsches. It was the Costa on the left-hand side, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah so. it was. Um, uh, we, we could see it from the, on the onboard angle in the cockpit. Oh, we took the hands off the steering wheel. Oh, yeah. They, yeah, they went to go. He, Remember, this is a man who hurt his hand uh, <laughs> yeah. lot at the beginning of last year as well. So oh, yeah. in that sort of situation, he's got probably oh. more experience of what happens when Safety it goes wrong. Car in this car in. What? And it's going to be less than three minutes at the moment. So we are, it was 2.56 under the safety car. So we're not going not gonna to have any added laps. If it's less than we, we four minutes. We might get one. We might get one. If there's a safety car further on or a full course yellow, yes, but not right yeah. now. But tell Hughes to just be s smart. He wants to fight me for this time of the race. Just chill the f out. If we want to play, we can play. Wow. If we want to play, let's play. I apologise for the language. They weren't too fast with the beep there. We heard the F uh, come out from Roland, who's not very happy that Hughes is on there. Cassidy's still got a tap mode here, right. so he's not got much. Go on. Find some more, is it, oh, it's find some more Tara under, under investigation. Really? That's, uh, yeah. that's what, that, according to race control, it's find some more Tara. You did say you thought it was a Mahindra, but we saw it as Costa for sure. So are the stewards needing their glasses cleaning? Which one of us is wrong? Yeah, they've got something wrong there because I don't think Frines and Mortara are ever on the same part of the racetrack. No. But look at this. Oh, it might be another incident. Away. It might oh. be another incident. Side by side, that is going to be Gunther and Dennis. And further back, Bird and DaCosta have swapped places. And there goes the attack mode. Muller takes attack mode, comes out side by side. And Cassidy takes the lead. But is he going to hold it this early in the race? Verline and Muller take six minutes of attack mode. And that's going to put him right back on the inside. Hughes going to go right around the outside. Keeps his foot pinned in. Off the track goes Verline as well. Cassidy comes up to take the lead. And they're side by side to turn one. Cassidy leads another lap time then as well. Into turn one and Cassidy leads. And Hughes holds off the back as well. Coming in and the app's down to third well good effort from nico miller i've been really impressed by him in this race so far he's really kept with this lead pack i thought he might drop back have to drop back to save energy but so far he's really been able to really challenge the leaders here and uh, jake Hughes, the pole sitter hasn't fallen back as much as i expected either so uh, that's two things that i didn't think are going to happen that are playing out but around the outside goes verline and he's looking ominous in that Porsche. I think I think this is going to turn into Verline versus Cassidy <laughs> for the rest of this. Yeah, Jaguar no, look good, and there goes Hughes trying to go defensive, but Verline's right there on the inside line into the breaking zone at turn seven. And coming out of nowhere is Muller trying to go right around the outside. Check advantage, not going to work there, my friend. Hughes leads. Jake Hughes has taken the lead of the race. That was a surprising one. Who's going to take the attack then? Yeah, it's also Hughes takes attack straight away. <laughs> There's only one reason he'd take the lead that quickly is to get to attack mode first and try and limit the damage to Cassidy. Well, also it's to try and uh, keep, protect track position as well. And the good thing for this is that Hughes has got one car in front of him that he can save energy behind as long as he can stay in its wake. <laughs> if, uh, if, as long as Cassidy can stay on the track, that's the question. And look at how early Cassidy's lifting. Round the outside goes Verline. Hughes had to lift as well. I saw his onboard. Everyone's lifting and coasting as well. He's really having to lift. That's because he's now under six minutes of attack mode. Verline's under four left. Uh, and Katsin, Seti Kamara is out of attack mode now. So's Dan Tictum. Oh, and out, that's Da Costa! Broken front wing! And it's rubbing on no the tyre! Yesterday's race winner who got disqualified is having absolutely no luck here in Mazzano. And he has fallen right to the back after such an impressive run. You cannot believe the racing gods have really got it in for him as his teammate takes the lead. And off the grass, further back, that's Mortar in finishers. Three wide and off the track goes one. That's 
Vanessa. Oh, be careful. It's going to be an unsafe rejoin, but luckily he's back on the circuit, but surely he has to give that place back. I think he's lost positions on that rejoin, Jess, because he was what? ahead of uh, Dennis, wasn't he? Now he's behind NATO. <laughs> Roland! Look at this, Roland's trying to get mixed up here with uh, a Hughes. Well, he said he wanted to fight, didn't he? He wants the rodeo start, and he's going for it on the inside. Dennis, I mean, look, Roland's going to send it on the inside. Hughes is going to go off the track, and Roland gives him a bit of elbow room. Fabulous driving between the two of them. He gave him a little bit of a Texas tornado shove off the track, and on the inside, another move on the inside line there. That's behind. That's NATO coming That's into play. Dennis. That's and, Dennis making a move there. And NATO and Vern, they've come to join the party as Dennis comes through back on the the inside line off goes Roland slightly as well. Dennis up to fifth, and there's contact between that. That's Dennis with Bird. So, how's he got back into this as well? Roland's back up into fifth position. Dennis down to seventh. Oh, Muller going on the outside of Cassidy. A second, now he's going to try and go past Verline as well. Don't show the pit lane. We don't care. Get to the action. My God, Whisper Films, come on. Aurora Media as well are still, well. yeah, they're yeah. still doing it, but they, they work together. We don't care! Get to the action! Jeez! Oh, this might be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so on the McLaren, oh, he's hit the back of Bird. So yeah. De Costa's done that all on his own at turn one. He just got completely caught out by uh, Bird's uh, the closing speed with Sam Bird there. And that's the set of Kamara going three, through there. Three, three. Look at this, Muller leading the race Muller. once more. Muller leads again. And we missed it. And, oh, I'm really... We need picture in picture! They can see on the dirty feed up in the commentary box. That's great for them, but we don't have access to that dirty feed. Muller, two minutes of tempo, just being kicked up everywhere. They split like no one parting the Red Sea into turn one. Round the outside, that's Roland coming back in. And all of a sudden, we're going to see as well, take the lead is Roland. Dennis is up into third. And that's De Costa now going to go a lap down. There's another one gone in front of the back. Tired problems as well. Can't see who it is at the moment. NATO. It's Norman NATO. NATO with the front wing underneath oh. the tyre. And he's going to have to pull off the track with that one. Van Dorn yeah, and Buemi. Van Dorn and Buemi in trouble too, guys. Van Dorn and Buemi have dropped right to the back of the field. So three. There's just carnage happening everywhere in race two. And there's a lot of tyre lockups as well. I'm just... Watching oh. um, one of the replays um, of one of the of NATO, and uh, it looks like the one on the wing's lead. gone off. Oh. Dennis. He goes round the outside of Miller at the chicane. And Roland leading. <laughs> he was the qualified to the jewels. Roland leads this race, and he has... and that's the Costa a lap down ahead of them, just going into attack mode as Gunther. Oh. Just coming out behind Cassidy. Cassidy led three laps, the most of anybody apart from Hughes in this race so far. As they come through, slippery surface at turn three. No further action between Franz and Mortar. That's because it was imaginary. As they come through down towards turn one. Of course it was. Well, nothing was happening. No one, they didn't make contact. Stewards have been, the stewards issued 9,000 euros worth of penalties before breakfast this morning. Seriously, before practice three, 9,000 uh, euros worth. Oh. Oh, and come to hit the wall. I think NATO hits the back of Van Dorn, does he? Yeah, and come to hit the wall at the exit as well as a result of that little three contact wide. Oh, yeah. Jeb, sorry. Jeb, he's hit. Jeb just gets oh, hit. Oh, Vern. Vern hit. Vern hit Cassidy. Vern hit Cassidy as well. Yeah, look, watch so this Cassidy. is exactly what happened to the Costa, isn't it? Where yeah. the drive behind just got caught out by the closing speed. We're on board with Cassidy, and there's the whack. Oh, oh. yes. That's not good. And this, we, and we don't need the pit. We, we don't need the pits. We don't need the pits. That right. Let's regroup here with a quick one to ten. Roland leads. Dennis, Verline, Muller, Hughes, top five. Gunther, Cassidy, Vern, Bird, Sete, Kamara has the top ten. That is Degrassi, Evans, Mortara, Fenestras, De Vries, Druvla, Tikta, Boemi, and in the pit lane, Nato, Van Dorn, and in out of twenty-first is De Costa. Finds out of the race. Van Dorn's in the pit lane for a new front wing. That's because he's hit the back of Sebastian Boemi, and that's why Boemi's dropped back and up into second place goes Verline down at turn fourteen. Slips it through on the inside line. So, Ronan leads this race, and now he's going to catch after the man he was trying to win against yesterday after Costa to lap this time around, as Hughes has a battle for third with Dennis. And coming up there, that's one of the ads cars. Contact between the McLaren, off the track goes Hughes. Oh, that was a bit risky from Jake Hughes there. 
Uh, I don't think it's going to take too much. He's going to cut the corner completely and barge the side. Yeah, sorry about that. He says he's, he's taking a bit of responsibility there for Hughes as it comes through, but everyone's going to Constantine the back up. Don't hit the back, Hughes. Oh, he's does hit the back, and it's contact. Contact. My word. Very slight contact compared to what we've seen elsewhere in this race, Josh. Mm. But yeah, that was a, trying to go around the outside of Nico Muller. <laughs> it's not the easiest move to make, even at a place like Misano. But uh, there we go. Uh, now we've got our top three in the championship, Roland, Verline, Dennis. Uh, of course, Dennis is second, and I think Verline is third. Yeah. Uh, all together are in the top three uh, in this race then. So it'll be interesting to see which, how this pans out. I wonder if Porsche will try and oh, use the nearly a lap round the cross. Oh, Sam Bird. That's Sam Bird. No, Hughes in more Careful. trouble. I think. It's Bird. Uh, it's Bird. It's Bird. Bird. Oh, it is Bird. Yeah, got a lock at the rear after a little tap, and these cars don't have power steering, and the engine kicks in, so motor just goes whoop with power, and he's dropped down to 17th place. To Costa's past Boemi. Boemi's into the pit lane, so Boemi, I think, is out of this race. So he's going to have some sort of change. There's debris at turn three. The slippery surface flag is out at that part of the circuit. As we come down, once it's been again. out for ages. Yeah, so I don't know why they have just haven't run out there and got it out. Hughes is down by about one percent compared to everybody else in the field. So McLaren, were you over-consuming at the start of this race? I wonder that that is the case because everyone else seems to be managing their, uh, their energy effectively you in know? this race, and we do not have long to go. And you can see who's been saving energy, the likes of Rubel, the ticks and the ones near the back. Cassidy, yeah. Cassidy and Jerubala. Watch out for him. Yeah, they've got good Evans times. is up to 11th. He stealthed his way up to 11th, despite that safety car slightly hurting him. He's still been able to get this strategy to work. So he's just been silently making up places in the background, now stuck behind Degrassi and Sete Kamara. So he'll need to clear them as quickly as possible. One more safety car would help them all here as well. Too, and then we'll have a flat out race to the end. Like 16 of 26, but... Nobody's willing to throw it into the wall at the moment. <laughs> but and that's, that's at the moment. Anything I wonder why, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> Anything can happen. As look at Verline, now starting to chase down. Now we're getting a proper motor race. Now they're all starting to push hard because we've consumed the energy we need. So now there's a race going on. Roland, Verline, Dennis. Well, to him. Yeah. This is them consuming, Josh. Right? Yeah, that's but, uh, the one. I, I, think it's, I think that's part of the end. We wouldn't get this if they hadn't conserved earlier yeah, we on. We saw Roland hit there. There. got hit off again. Okay, Sam, any damage? Question. No, this. <laughs> calm down. Calm. Come on, mate. Calm down. Sam Bird. Good advice from Stephen. Yeah, I was going to say. He doesn't like it, does he, Sam? Is it I don't think Sam's a big fan of pack racing. Oh, this... And his Robin. He's even angry. Less than Sam. Oh. <laughs> Well, that was riveting. He shut, the, he, he shut the door there. Oh, and Boemi's out. Oh, oh, and Mitch Evans is off. Mitch Evans is off. He's down to 17th place. What's happened there? Has he taken a tag mode? I hope so. What's uh, happened? Mitch Evans has He's not off. taken a, a, a tag Evans mode. Evans is off. Evans has hit the wall. Evans is out. Evans is out of the race. He's stuck. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's going to be a safety car. It's going to be a safety car. Mitch Evans. Oh, you're saying, Josh? Yeah. About safety cars. Yeah, curse of the commentator. We've been talking about Evans. That has to be a safety car. They can't restart it to the exit of turn nine. They've got time to call it. They're come on, the turn five. come on, safety oh, car. Oh, Berlin going need... for the lead. Oh, they're going to have to be careful here because oh, that was a bit of a slide. Roland got a really poor exit. Double out yellow. Of yeah, so we'll keep an eye. That's going to be permanent. It has to be a safety car. He's right in the middle of the track. And that's that's dangerous. They've got to throw that virtual. They, they, they can't. Uh, Mitch Evans is moving again. And Verlein takes Mitch the lead. Mitch Evans takes the lead. Verlein's got the inside line. He takes the lead away. Roland's going to fight back round the outside. Coming into turn seven. That's going to be wheel to wheel. Verlein will have track Green position. Flag. And he's got him. The race can continue. That's great news. But Evans is out. Evans must have got going again. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. I saw on the track map that he's got going. So... Run. I think, I think it's going to be between the top three for the race. Dennis seems to like this type of race because he seems to gain so many positions. Same with Roland. The, the, this track benefits these two drivers. Edmund's having no luck. Says SHG, how many times has happened to him this year? A lot. Dennis so 17. many times. So they're still going to fly it in. Oh, lovely. You know, it's ironic for Evans that he's in this position because he didn't qualify well. Because this is a circuit where, of all circuits, where you think qualifying wouldn't matter. But actually, <laughs> it has made the difference for him today. The top two uh, are pulling away. 
Yeah, I thought they might be upping their pace because they thought a safety car was coming out and they were trying to make sure they were in the lead when that safety car was deployed. But now it's not happened. They might be over-consuming compared to Dennis, uh, that group between Dennis, Muller, Gunther and Cassidy. As we see, look, Mortara, the wing hanging by Fred and Fenestraz up the inside. Nicely done from Fenestraz. Up to 11th position. Oh, no, oh, no, that was Mortara and Fenestraz, sorry. Yeah. It, it, the cars look similar. Same, uh, yeah, they're well, all very different. I can show you how to tell them apart with my uh, Lego uh, <laughs> models if you want. <laughs> now we see Roland into the back of the club. Yellow flag, yellow 10 flag, seven. double yellow, 10 7. So, what's happened here? I'm looking further back on the TV pictures, can't see anything. Here's Roland. Okay, let's go. Oh, it's green flag Roland. again, chocolate. And try to take this battery and target under control. It's all fine. Roland's good. Roland's good. He's fine. It's all fine. Where have I heard that from Porsche before? Green, I think it might have been either Bird, uh, NATO, or number so two. I don't know what number two is. If has got the least Van energy Dorn. of anyone. Van Dorn could have just got out of the way of everyone if they were constantined up with each other. That's a possibility. Yeah. yeah. So they will sit. I always panic about yellow. Everybody does. It's not nice when it comes out. Roland's going to have a little go here as well. Dennis has pulled it back into a second, and so the top two now starting to save the energy. Seven laps to go, and this is Bird. You're right, Jess. It's Bird at turn seven. He's going to go into the inside line. Oh, and he's lost it. Oh, he's had another incident here. Just spun on the paddle. Just spun on the paddle while you're he talking. That was the uh, regen paddle. He was trying to use it behind Tictum and lost he's out. He's up. And they were talking to him on the radio, so they, he, he he overdid it on the radio, got confused. Dennis said Cassidy instant noted. Wait, did they have an incident? Did they? So the Costa has decided to pit again rather than be lapped by the field, which is interesting. But uh, yeah, he. Uh, I think they didn't want him to hold yeah. up Verline essentially, so that looks like a big order there. Let's go down to Nikki Shield, she's got news in the pits. So I'm down here at the Envision Garage with team principal Sylvain Filippi. Obviously hugely disappointing, both cars are out. Um, what did Robin Fryne say over the team radio about that incident where he got, well, sandwiched between the two cars? Yeah, he said exactly that. He said he uh, was trying to really stay out of trouble. That was the main strategy for the race, to be honest, in the first part. He did well up to that point and he got sandwiched and you can see on the onboard, it's pretty clear. Like, cars arrive from each side and he's in the middle. There's literally no evasive action he can take. It's very disappointing. Do you think a further action should be taken? Yeah, the stewards will be looking at it. Um, well I mean, our race is done anyway. So. Well, let's go, go for the lead. Thank you very much, Nikki. As Verline is holding the back to Roland and Dennis as they come through. Down the back straight we come. Oh, I don't think we're going to see anything, but now look, here's Dennis. Roland goes for it on the inside line and Roland takes the lead. That was brilliant. And now Dennis is going to feel, have an opportunity to feel his way through. Can Muller get in there too in the act? Can Apt win their first race back in Formula E? I think that's a tall order, but the big, the Roland had to do that, didn't he? Because Dennis, with more energy, was closing on the pair of them. Has Dennis won a race this year? He has in Diria, or supposedly. I wasn't. I didn't right, know. I want Muller to win because he hasn't won a race. <laughs> He's not won a race in Formula His best result second in Valencia 2021. But the less said about that race, the better. Cassidy doing the best on energy, 24%. So have Jaguar played a blinder here? Are they going to breeze through in these last five laps? It's getting close, isn't it, this one? Really is strong as they come back up. Roland, 90%. Yeah, he's going to go on, Jess. No, don't worry. Carry on. I, I, it was another side point. <laughs> oh, right. No worries. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, 21% for Verline. But as you said, Ed, 18 for Roland. With this many laps to go, he's going to be really consuming a lot. Maybe he has done a bit too much. 2.56. I don't think we'll have any added laps. We'll get told that soon. It must be more than four minutes to get an added lap. It was 2.56 on the stopwatch. Yeah, the problem for Cassidy is that he's really being held up and stuck behind Gunther. So he's got all that energy, but he can't take advantage of it at the moment because Gunther has started to up his pace and defend a bit more as well. Dennis closing in. He has an opportunity to win for the second time this year, but Roland wants a race win. What did you say about victories for Roland Dead, by the way? He hasn't won one as far as I can remember. 
you won Berlin uh, penultimate race of 2020. Ah, that was his first win. He's not won since. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this would be his first win on his return to Nissan on the road, apart from yesterday, of course. Yeah. If he can pull this off. We did forget That's that. That's how he doesn't take away from him. That's going to be very <laughs> interesting because, yeah, Roland won that Berlin race. I thank you for reminding me that. That was the six races in He's had a days. lot of pole positions, though. Yeah. But Roland is the winner from yesterday, officially. And the results are under appeal. But if Roland wins today, he would have done the double without actually doing the double, which would be a first in Formula E. No one's ever done that before. Doing the double without doing the double. Uh, no, no, uh, I'm not sure uh, uh, can, can appeal the penalty. Uh, well, appeal the fact they got uh, they've put that, it in. that they broke the rules. That that's a slam dunk. What they're probably going to appeal is the disqualification instead of a time penalty. But even then, I think it was. There's precedent for being disqualified for putting the wrong part on the car. You think Daniel Apt in Hong Kong a yeah, few years yeah. ago. Uh, you think Porsche themselves in previous examples that Webber. I've pointed out as and well. And more Porsche. Like, you know, it's... Jake Dennis is saving. He's dropped behind these two. I think Jake De Dennis is saving energy, ready for the last lap. 1.8 behind. So he's getting ready for a little attack. And, of course, we've seen the difference when you can go full throttle compared to everybody else. So there will be a difference. Derivola passes Mortara. Boemi and Frines, the only two official retirements from this race. Costa down 20th. Birds up to 14th again as they come through. Dennis only on 14% now. So he's actually the same as real life. Roland on 10 4% per lap. Roland's not making this to the end, I don't think. I think he's over-consumed by a lap. Unless uh, everyone else is just saving energy for no reason. Sede Kamara did say uh, yesterday when they did the super save strategy at the beginning at the end of the race and still had energy left no, over, which was a bit odd. Yeah, no more lap then. So they've got to get it done now. So this... Oh, is that uh, Gunther defending the inside from Cassidy at turn one in the background? And Cassidy's still stuck behind, so... This means Dennis is sort of in the box seats, no threat from behind. Focus min speed T12. I know, I know you're struggling. Focus may well, but yet minimum speed, man. I'm driving something different to them. <laughs> Forget Leave me alone. Speed. We'll know, I know what I'm doing. Exactly. Kind of vibes. <laughs> but Muller might sneak a podium here as Gunther passes Cassidy, confirming that fifth place. And Verline's right in the back here. Morning to Charles Fan. Gunther is carrying Maserati as much as he can, says SHD. Five second time oh, penalty. Points off the point. Sorry, five second time penalty for Degrassi for causing a collision. Well, that's the first oh, time I heard about Degrassi, what the incident was. I'm going to assume deserved, given Degrassi's track record. It is <laughs> Roland people. needs to save. Roland needs to save. He's not going to make it. If he does it. that, he loses track position, Jess. So it's kind of rock and a hard it's place. Kind of, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's between Verline and Dennis for the race win. What was that percentage on that for Roland? It was four, what six. Was it? Six. It was six percent left, whereas the, the rest have about nine percent. He's not going to make yeah, it. Yeah, he was on ten, and Verline was on fourteen. Yeah. Uh, last I checked. That he's not going to make it. He can't make six percent over two laps. It's a four percent lap each round. That's that's going to be mega regen saving. The problem is that he hasn't got the draft from anyone to cope behind yeah. to save energy. So that maybe where went a little bit too early, but I think uh, he's just doing exactly what he did yesterday as well. Because remember, he did this and Costa caught him. Is it going to be another Porsche yeah. flying by him in the final lap here? Muller is looking very tasty behind Dennis as well. Andretti's starting to get a little bit alarmed, but they look it at to that like, they okay. They don't look alarmed. No, they don't, do they? Actually, look at that, there we <laughs> go. He's thinking about it. Dennis goes defensive. And around the outside, Muller's having a go at the 8-9 chicane. Hasn't worked out. Hughes at the inside. Oh, Gunther goes the track. in trouble. Hughes straight off the track. And Gunther is in trouble. And Hughes going to take him back. Yes, because Cassidy's got through. So yeah. now Muller's in, in trouble as well because Cassidy's got so much more energy. So it's do or die here. Dennis under a bit of pressure now as well. Here comes Cassidy. But now Muller's starting to attack. It's the final lap of the e -Prix coming up. Who is going to win? Last lap will be coming on. Another 3.382 metres. What can we get? Kilometres, miles, metres. They've never told us. There's M on my statute here. I presume it's kilometres. That's how we go here in the FIA. But look at that. Cassidy's right in the back. He sniffs the podium. Roland's right. I think Roland's got enough to hold on here. It'd be a third I, thought, I, wonder, I wonder if he was saving the last lap. And I think what he was doing Ed, is he was getting the gap to, to around about this much and then he can save on the final lap. Oh, Roland's out! Roland's out! 
Dennis Dennis Dennis. He's defending his bear line. Oh, what? round the outside. Roland, 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 Roland stopped. Roland has He's run really out. Roland has run out of energy. He did get it wrong. It's hit zero. Porsche are going to win two in a row, but one on the track because one got taken away. It's 0.0. .0. Roland has misjudged it. And now there's debris further back. There's a wing gone. Dennis second. Muller's on the podium. Can Cassidy stanch it? Fenestrals moves up. What's up to Vernon Gunther? They've made contact. Drama here as Roland drops, drops, drops. Muller's having to save energy as well. The podium's under threat. Cassidy goes through. And Muller clips his wing. He fights hard. Coming through. Pascal Verlai will win for the second time this year. Well done to him. He's lifting and coasting. Battle for second. It's all over the place. It's three wide. And Cassidy's going to try and go on the inside line for third. Across the line. Verlai wins here. But a foot across the line. Who's going to take second, third, and fourth? Cassidy gets it. Cassidy at the line by four. Five one hundredths of a second. Muller down to fourth. Dennis second. Verline wins here in Mazzano as Roland runs out of energy. Wow! Pascal Verline wins. Nissan don't know what they've done. I tell you what you've done. You've got your sums wrong. We could see it coming. How? Why couldn't they? And Fenestra has got sixth as well, so it was clearly Roland is over-consuming and he just could not save the energy he needed and has left him just completely standing still on the final lap there. So such a disappointment for Nissan. That could cost them the championship lead as well that they just got into yesterday in the drivers. But Berline, full credit to him. Porsche, for the moment, <laughs> pending any post-race investigations, have got this right. And honourable mention further back, Seda Kamara getting another great result, P7, for ERT and double points for Maserati. I'd say I was a bit surprised Rubler about getting his first point. That he is quite down Scott on energy, is so I wasn't sure if they are wrong or we are wrong, but um, yeah, I think I trusted the team and the information I had, and yeah, really good job. Proud of the team. Well, I'm sure they are very happy. It's redemption after losing the win yesterday. Congratulations and uh, enjoy the celebrations. Thank you very much. John Vern finishes eighth and becomes the highest point scorer in Formula E history. Johan Jeruvelo finishes in 10th place and becomes a point scorer in Formula E for the very first time. Incredible. This is the fight to the line. We just saw it. Verline takes his second win of the season. Our first repeat winner of season 10 of ABBFA Formula E. And at the line, Muller had to lift. Cassidy went do or die. He took third place. Muller down to fourth. Dennis secured second position. But it was so close Ed and Jess at that last corner. Ed, it was literally it was just door mirror to door mirror. Yeah, I thought you got a feel for Muller there because that was thousands of a second in that. And Cassidy literally stole that podium at the death there. Yeah. And there's a oh, hang on. good strategy from Jang. Oh, is that Van Dorn in the middle of the circuit there? I thought we saw a DS Penske just stranded in the infield <laughs> and they've just sort of left it there. It is Van Dorn, yeah. Se he stopped. So has Freins. They've stopped he too. Stopped a while ago as well. Yeah. Right. I know it, it, it was a while back, yeah. I, I know you two need to run off now after the flags. So, Ed, what did you make of that race? Yeah, I think I still, luckily I've still got about 15 minutes, but uh, but yeah, I a little bit calmer than yesterday in a good way, I think, and uh, great to see it come down to sort of strategy and intel intellect and Roland. This time he, he got lucky yesterday, but his luck ran out today, unfortunately for him. Uh, so that is a shame for Nissan. But full credit to Berline and Dennis and Cassidy. Right, 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 right. Nah, that's fine. Oh, did he say oh, anything? Gone. No, I did not. Uh, <laughs> he didn't say anything. But anyway, yeah, so Verline, I think Verline seems a little bit winded and surprised after that, but uh, I think it's been a while since his last win, wasn't it, in Mexico? So yeah. uh, well deserved. And good to see Porsche bounce back after what's been a series of not the most positive headlines for them. But yeah, I have a feeling that the recriminations from yesterday are going to run and run and people are going to make judgments about formulae that may not, I don't feel are necessarily fair, but it'd be interesting to hear what uh, Jeff Dodds has to say on Wednesday when he comes on the Formula E zone show. If I can self-promote one thing, just a tiny, tiny little bit. Do it, do it, do it. I've been doing it all yeah. week. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, 
It's going to be interesting managing that room because I feel like I've got the most harsh criticisms of Jeff Dodds and nothing to do with anything that we've seen pretty much apart from on the advertising on some of the track. But, but got, anyway. I've got questions. I've got questions. As you can imagine, Ed, my questions range from the uh, partnership with content creators who don't bother with Formula E uh, compared to myself. And also, Ref was on site, I believe. Uh, but he's, weekend, Yeah, but he's done nothing. He's done a few shorts and that's it. He's done nothing. And he's getting all the promotion. He's done nothing. He doesn't understand the sport. He's done nothing. And we're here passionately calling these races, honestly. Well, let's not be gatekeepers here, Jeff. No, I mean, but hey. I mean, yeah. Ref was paid a, a small amount of money to have a good time <laughs> to explain that. Is it our place to judge? I, I don't know. I mean, oh. me and Jess maybe will act like content creators when we get to London, I guess. But uh, I'm not sure. sure the content we make will be of particularly high quality. <laughs> we might just be enjoying the race. But uh, but anyway. You'll um, have to send a video yeah, to I've... the Gulf box as well. <laughs> we should, we should, we should. We, we, um, we, 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 we're, we're on the same ground. We're on different, we're different roads, but same ground sound. Mm. I mean, Jack Jim yeah, will be exactly, there. Yeah. Jack Jim Allen and Pico will be there, won't they? So yeah, just... we'll be able to meet up in between. There'll yeah. be a lot walking around. Yeah. Get, their uh, mic- but, but, yeah. get their microphones Sorry. and do some hosting. We, uh, just send a video to us from them because we'll get their stuff yeah anyway i've not got too much of a conclusion yeah. here other than uh <laughs> yeah it was really unexpected i think again my heart goes out to nico muller because i really mm. thought he might have that podium in the bag and uh just had it taken from you saw how frustrating it was for apt but i think great to see apt have a much better race than expected because uh that team would have been near the bottom of the standings uh, all of last year and it's good to see Muller really showing what he can do at a crucial, crucial moment in his uh, Formula E career. Absolutely. It's great from the weekend. It's been a difficult... It's been an interesting one. There's, there's definitely questions for Jeff Dodds on the FE bar on Wednesday as well on the Formula E zone. That's the place to go. Uh, before we hear from the interviews, Jess, what did you make of this weekend and before you went off as well? A lot better than yesterday. It was, I think, they got used to racing a bit more as well. She about voted, but I knew that he is... Uh, Strategy was wrong from the start, but Dennis again, really, really performing today, and he gained quite a few positions from it. But I think the story is Pascal Verlein, first for peak winner. Really, really great stuff. But Dennis, I think one of the stars, I think, for performing so well um, um, in, in 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 two races in a row, some decent points as well got from it. But looking forward to Monaco as well should be a good one i always love monaco in formula e so i'm, I'm excited for that one yep and that'll be part of the commentary lineup as well i will be late to that party so jess and ed will take you through the rest of the weekend if, if i get to turn up at all uh, in next time out so thank you jess thank you ed i'll let you two dive off and uh karun chanok's talking uh out there as well with the formula e drivers show for some reason so they've all got some wireless mics on don't know what's happening out there but uh it's a, it's, let's listen actually in. Good points on the board for Sasha Fenestres with all the drama <laughs> that was kicking off that final lap. We kind of missed yeah, yeah, that, but Fenestres back into the points for only the second time in uh, 2024. <laughs> Jake Hughes, what's the body language look like for the boy from Birmingham? A little bit frustrated for my money. I wanted to, to get the first attack out of the way, which is why we did that. But then, I don't know. And it ended up, and Cass was just like breaking crazy in the middle of 12, so I didn't come back out ahead of him. It's yeah. crazy so how like every time both of you were using the race, first attack, like, they, the target yeah. Yeah. Like, because like, I, I don't know if Cass was the one doing it, but he was... <laughs> the target is crazy, man. I'm like, it's I wish it was like this on the first three laps. It's so rubbish, <laughs> this race. Uh, when I struggle at the moment, with, um, just I think it's missing of experience. Battery, but battery. To, battery. to realize, well, you know, I don't know if it's energy or the race. Uh, let's go down to chat to our race winner then. Pascal Verlein oh, is oh, with Nikki oh, Shields, the master oh, of Mazzano. Oh, Pascal Verlein, your sixth Formula E career win couldn't have come at a better moment. What a redemption story for you and Porsche. <laughs> yeah, definitely yesterday would have been better, but uh, yeah, very happy about the race today. Uh, quite chaotic again in the beginning until mid-race, um, but yeah, actually in the end I wasn't sure if I should stay in the lead or let Oli through the pace. He, um, the pace he did just seemed a bit weird and too fast to try and defend, so uh, yeah, I, I didn't defend him hard and I uh, was a bit surprised then about his energy in hearing that. I wasn't sure if if the team had the correct information or not, but uh, yeah, in the end it, it proved to be <laughs> to be the right thing to do and um, it was a lot of managing in the end, the energy, the battery, the tires, just yeah, everything. 
everything all came together for you and yet yeah, Oliver Ellen obviously uh, did not do the energy calculation correctly there um, talk us through though now you are back on the top of the championship standings yeah it goes quickly from zero to hero or the other way around I mean we know that in Formula E I think we had the pace this weekend to uh, win both races um, unfortunately yesterday with this kind of races I was a bit of a victim with uh, yeah, with my front wing and then um, yeah, being at the back. But uh, today was a big redemption for us. Let's see the checks now, but um, I'm pretty sure that it will be okay. Excellent. Yeah, let's hope you got those springs changed in time. Thanks very much, Pascal Verlein, the winner of Mazzano. Pascal Verlein then takes top honours. Well, he was there and thereabouts for the entirety of the race and kept Oliver Rowland honest right up until the moment when it mattered. Coming on to the final lap, we saw Roland with that advantage, and then he slowed down on the final lap, did Oliver Roland. Pascal Verlein inheriting the race lead to take his second win of the season, the first double winner of 2024 as well. Let's go down to Jake Dennis then. Second place, another podium. Jake Dennis, huge congratulations on the podium again with a second place. You said this morning that you were having difficulties with the car, but it all came together today. Yeah, it came together in the race. You know, obviously ninth to second is a pretty good day in the office, but uh, it, was, it was a struggle, you know. As you saw, I, as soon as the pace picked up at the front, I just got dropped immediately and, uh, yeah, fell back into the clutches of Nick and uh, or, or both Nicks. And, uh, yeah, it was just survival mode for me today. Uh, this weekend has been a real struggle, but to come home with two second places on a weekend uh, where you're starting outside the top, the top ten both races, it's um, yeah a good, a good salvage of points. It's the fifth time that you and Pascal have finished a one-two. I just shows how good the Porsche powertrain is. You know, full credit to these guys for building such an efficient uh, powertrain to give us the opportunity to do this. Um, yeah, you know, we, we both obviously scored a lot of points and. Uh, yeah, sitting pretty uh, towards the top end of the championship. So, yeah, overall, uh, a lot of hard work to do before Monaco to sort our qualifying pace out, and then we can, um, yeah, really start this championship. Excellent. That's what we like to hear. Thanks very much. Congratulations, Jake Dennis. Jake Dennis on to the podium once again in 2024. Sadly, he will be absolutely delighted following that result. Been a superb season for uh, Dennis so far in some tricky circumstances, I think it's fair to say. Podium in Tokyo, podium yesterday, another here makes it his third in a row. Let's go down to Nicky once again, who is with the man who finishes third on the podium, Nick Cassidy. Nick Cassidy, absolutely phenomenal, particularly the final lap there, but a great race from you finishing in P3. Yeah, yeah, I think we've got to be happy in some ways. Um, it's been a, a rough, rough four races, so it's nice to be back on the podium. I think it was five hundredths of a second between you and, and Malia. Yeah, nice. It's kind of a cherry on the cake. Well done to them as well. They, they're doing a great job. It's so cool to see, see Nico and the app guys doing well. Um, it was a close finish. Thanks very much. Congratulations, Nick Cassidy. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Bit of breaking news to bring you here from the commentary box as well. Just heard that Jake Hughes has picked up a five-second time penalty for gaining an advantage off the track. That demotes him from fifth place down to eighth position at the chequered flag. Some drama for Hughes. Here is the moment that Cassidy managed to nip ahead of Nico Muller and take that final place on the podium by just five one hundredths of a second. Well then, what a race, what a weekend we've had in the sunshine in Mazzano. The upshot is Pascal Verlein taking victory here for round seven. We always knew it was going to be dramatic. I didn't quite think it would play out in the circumstances that it did. I mean, the last time we saw the, the energy graphic, DC, Roland had 10% of energy left and we thought he was going to be all right. Yeah, it, it all looks as if it was under control. You can see Hughes' five-second penalty there, getting advantage off track. That was when he went through the chicane, he went up one place because he didn't give it back, but um, that adds to what would be a disappear disappointing result.
But the main thing really is, uh, was there was there misinformation to Roland in the car? We need to wait and hear from him. We certainly do. Let's have a look then at the classification for the round seven of the Zonner E3. It is Pascal Verlein who takes top honours, his second victory of 2024, the first double victor of the year as well. Jake Dennis in second place, Nick Cassidy in third, Nico Muller with a superb fourth place in the Ad Cupra, and Sasha Fenestras in the Nissan. A top five result, only his second points finish of the season. Sergio Sato Camera doing it good for ERT again ahead of Jean-Eric Byrne. He'll be disappointed from his front row start when he converted into seventh ahead of Hughes, Gunter, and then Jay Hunter Rubler, his first points in Formula E in his rookie season as well. Sam Berg was in the wars and down in 11th place ahead of Degrassi, Mortara, Tickton, De Vries, Nato, and then Antonio Felix da Costa in the pit lane with a new front ring uh, wing. Sadly, we said goodbye to Mitch Evans, to Oliver Rowland on that last lap, to Stoffel Van Dorn, and of course to both Envision, Sebastian Buemi, and to Robin Bright as well. Somewhat of a race of attrition over the course of it here uh, for round seven. And let's see what it means in terms of the Drivers' Championship. Well, exactly as we expected. Pascal Verlein tied on the top with Jake Dennis. 89 points apiece as we head into Monaco in a couple of weeks' time. Oliver Rowland, still despite non-scoring, will be there and thereabout. But if you consider he was leading the championship coming into this race, that's a disappointing end to his weekend. A very bitter pill to swallow. Nick Cassidy bumps himself right up into contention as well. Four drivers separated by a very small margin. Max Gunter uh, not too far away there either. A little bit further down the order. More points on the board for Sergio Sete. Camera cements his 18th place in the championship standings. And Jay Hander Rubler gets himself onto the board in 20th as well. Well, let's get down to Saunders, who is with Nissan team principal Tommaso Volpe. Oliver Rowland ending up out of the race on the final lap after running out of energy. Saunders, tell us all what it's all about. So I'm here with team boss uh, of Nissan, Tommaso Volpe. That is very, very difficult. Can you explain to me first what happened? Well, we're trying to understand because it looked that everything was under control in terms of uh, data, but energy and battery temperature. So there must be something wrong. There must be something wrong in the data we were working with. So to be honest, we, we don't know yet. We are trying to understand it. It was really, really strange. So there's potential that it could be more of a mechanical or technical issue as opposed to a strategy thing. Because I, I was having flashbacks of Mexico yeah. <laughs> with Oliver and Seb a few years ago. Yeah, no, I think it's more on the data, on the control systems. Probably we were working with wrong, I mean, the system had some wrong information, like number of laps or things like this, because uh, it looked everything under control and Oliver didn't report any mechanical issue, anything like this, so uh, it's too soon, really. We need to look into into the, the process and all the data we manage in the garage to understand. That. Have you spoken to Oliver yet? Well, not yet. I prefer to give him some time to <laughs> to digest it because it's really, really a shame. He did everything perfectly. The whole race he managed perfectly, like yesterday, and he could have been a second win uh, in a row. Uh, but this is motorsport. Yesterday it was very tough for Antonio, so these things happen. I know it's obviously a, such a, a difficult result, so disappointing. But you know, overall. Positivity is really there, you know, to have the win yesterday, another podium, four podiums in a row before that, you know, things are looking good for the team, but it's not going to mean anything right now, is it? Yeah, no, no, the team is doing a huge step forward. And the, the big positive of this race is that not only Oli was a, a, a one step from, from the victory, but uh, Sasha did a, a great performance. He actually finished P6 for now. <laughs> and uh, so I, I believe Hugh is in front of him and he started in pole. So he did an amazing, uh, an amazing race. So I think overall the weekend, very positive. It is of course frustrating that uh, Oliver was a few corners from the victory. Again, as long as we find what was the issue and uh, we manage it for next time and it's frustrating, but uh, sometimes it could be a, a puncture. It can be, you know, it's motorsport. There are always some factors that you cannot control. So, Thanks, Tomasi. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Tomaso. Thank you to uh, Saunders down there as well. A bit of pill to swallow, but magnanimous in defeat is Tommaso Volpe. Time to reset and go again next time. Now time for the podium celebrations once again here in Mazzano. Here's the garage reaction, and this is what it meant for Borsha and Pascal to take the lead on the final lap. Very rarely do we see a motion like that from Florian Modlinger. Fantastic.
result for them. Disappointment on the other side for Team Nissan. Headed hands moment for Tommaso Volpe and also for the rest of the team. Cooper disappointed there to just miss out on that podium right at the line as well. Five one hundredths of a second separating that final podium place for Nico Muller. Meanwhile, quite a comfortable margin in the end for Pascal Verlein. Only the two seconds he had over Jake Dennis, despite only taking the lead in the last half a lap in the race. So then, time for the podium celebrations to begin. Third place it will be for Nick Cassidy. First of all, the team representative for Pascal Verline and Porsche will make his way up. That's uh, for Bruce Russell, the race engineer for him. The winning team, Takwai Porsche Formula E team, is race engineer Fabrice Roussel. Fabrice makes his way on to the podium then for the Takwai Porsche team. To be fair, it's not often that uh, team members end up on the podium. So, it's a credit for all it's worth. It's a brilliant atmosphere here in Bastano as it has been in the sunshine all weekend. Yeah, it's been a very, very nice weekend and everything getting set up ever so nicely as well as uh, Jess and Ed have departed the comments box. I don't know if Amy's in the background uh, as well, watching. Hello. Hello, Amy. What do you make of that one then? Uh, much calmer than yesterday for good reasons though. Uh, still an exciting race, still plenty of uh, drama. But yeah, unfortunate for uh, Roland. But yeah, very exciting race still. And Monica last year, remember, there was a crazy amount of overtakes, wasn't there, mm. last year? Uh, so cannot wait to see uh, how it all goes then. On to the podium then. Cassidy finishes in third. Five thousandths of a second was the separation between. You see our countdown below me here for the Monaco e -pre. Jess and Ed will be in the box for that one throughout the weekend as well. In two weeks' time. Second place for Jake Dennis, an impressive weekend for him. Certainly got a lot more to look forward to. I wonder what, di what difference we're gonna see, what energy, what passion he's gonna have holding up here. Great stuff from him as he comes across the line. And it will be Pascal Verline with another race win in the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. A super, super job for the ceremonies. We'll hand back over to Tom Brooks. He's released for Fabrice Roussel. Stands in second place on the podium once again this year. And now. But now, what can you say about this man here? Cool, calm, composed. Perfect Pascal pounced at the finish. He was right there when it mattered. He goes on to the podium, to the top step for the second time this season. Our first double victor in 2024. We had six winners from six races. That streak comes to an end here on a Sunday in Mazzano. Pascal Verline takes top honours in round seven here in Mazzano, but before he goes to the podium, he wants to celebrate with his team down there, and I can't say that I blame him one bit, because that was one of the most unlikely victories. In commentary, we thought Roland had enough energy from what we had available to us information-wise at the time. It looked as if he would be all OK. Right at the end of the race, clearly some kind of a miscalculation his opportunity to take victory, a second successive one for that matter for Oliver Rowland, and it's not only done that, it's cost him a chance. It's cost him the title lead, certainly, here this afternoon, that's for sure. And what would have been a very well-deserved fall of points of 25. And now the national anthem of the winning now time for the national anthem of our winning driver and team for Germany.
Miguel Verlein. Two wins in 2024 for the German driver. Only one national anthem though, because Porsche was the same as Pascal Verlein. The trophy ceremony now being delivered out here on the track. And it will be given to as well. I'm going to put my head back on and show Easier to speak with that and hear what's going on in my ears. Gabriel Masano will present the trophy for Porsche to get yet another top honour from them as well this weekend. They had to give the other one or two away yesterday, of course, to Nissan. Porsche do the double. They're appealing yesterday's results. Let's just hope that Pascal Verline might be okay after today's poor De Costa. No points this weekend, despite winning. He has been stopped at every turn. He's proven to me that he deserves a place in Formula E. Porsche must give it to him next season. Third place went to Cassidy. Second place goes to Jake Dennis. An amazing performance from him. Strategy was on point. Started ninth in this race. Ends second. Would have been third. And fourth and fifth would have been Muller and Cassidy. But Cassidy got through at the last second. And Pascal Verlein gets his second win of the season. Our first repeat winner of season 10 of ABB FIA Formula E. Verlein wins here in Mazzano. And now, as you can hear Alexa saying, it's time for the champagne. Well, Mazzano has absolutely delivered in every possible way. It has been beautiful. It has been bold. It has been brilliant. Yes, the racing was peloton. Yes, we've been having trouble. But the ending of the races, both of them, were good. Just wish that could have been the factor across the board. So round eight is coming up next, the halfway stage of the Formula E season. That will take us to Monte Carlo in two weeks' time. My thanks to Omi down in the pits, my thanks to Jess, and my thanks to Ed as well. Celebrations concluded here for ABBFA Formula E. What are we going to see when we go to Monaco? It's one of the best races of the year. There's always drama on the full Grand Prix layout. And Gen 3 proved last year we can race at Monaco. Can't wait. Join us in two weeks' time to find out. But beautiful, magnificent, magical Mazzano is done. We'll see it again in 12 months' time. Hopefully, though, with a little bit of work with the tack charge to make the racing a little bit more exciting. Because that wasn't Formula E's finest weekend. We'll see you next time out in Monaco. Bye-bye. <laughs>